Hi there. Now, quite often you're going to find that you get questions where you've got to find a particular value in a coordinate, say, that lies on a plane. And so what I've got here is an example which hopefully will demonstrate how to handle questions like this. We've got to find the value of p if the point minus 3p minus 2 lies on the plane with equation r equals 2i minus 3j plus 5k plus alpha times minus i plus j minus 4k plus beta times 3i plus 7j minus k. Now I'm assuming that you're familiar with this particular form of the equation of a plane, the parametric vector form. I've got a sketch here as well, not that you necessarily have to draw a sketch to be able to do this question, but uh, it just hopefully shows you what's going on. We've got the point then with coordinates minus 3p minus 2 on the plane. And remember this first part of the equation of the plane, this vector 2i minus 3j plus 5k represents a fixed point on the plane. And then these two vectors are vectors which are parallel to the plane that are going in different directions and I've just illustrated those here. So that to get to any point on the plane we come up to the known fixed point and then we do go so many times in this direction followed by so many times in this direction given by adding alpha times this vector plus beta times this vector. Now if a point then lies on this plane it must satisfy the equation. There must be some value of alpha and beta that take us to this point given by this position vector minus 3p minus 2. So what we need to do is substitute this in for the position vector r, compare components to get the values of alpha and beta that will involve solving simultaneous equations and then once we know alpha and beta we should be able to compare it to the j component and work out what p is. So that's an overview of how I'm going to go about doing this kind of question. You might in fact at this point want to just pause the video and have a go. So I'll just give you a moment to do that. Okay, welcome back if you had a go. Now the final answer for P is minus eight. So congratulations if you uh, got that. If not, I'll just take you through how we should do it. So we've got our coordinates of our point here so the position vector then is minus 3p minus 2 so we can just put this down here minus 3p and then minus 2 so we've got this vector for r and then it's going to equal this vector which I'm going to write again as column vectors much quicker I think 2 minus 3 5 and then plus alpha times the vector minus 1, 1, minus 4 and then plus beta times the vector 3, 7 and minus 1. Okay, so we've got that down there. Now what I'm going to do is compare the i components and compare the k components. From that I'll generate the two simultaneous equations which we can work out what alpha and beta are and then I'm going to substitute those values for alpha and beta in for the j component and get p. So if we compare the i components we've got minus 3 here equals 2 and then we've got minus alpha and then we've got plus 3 beta. And I'm going to rearrange this, make alpha the subject. So if I add alpha to both sides and add 3 to both sides, we're just going to get alpha then equals 5 plus 3 beta. Okay, so I'll call that equation 1. 
and we'll build up our second equation by looking at the k component. So uh, we'll just put k there, should underline that vector there as well. Okay, so the k components, we've got minus 2 equals, and then we've got 5 minus 4 alpha, and then minus 1 beta, or just minus beta. And from this, I'll make beta the subject, add beta to both sides, and add 2 to both sides. So therefore, we get beta equals 5 plus 2, which is 7, and then minus the 4 alpha. And I'll call this equation 2. Now, there's many ways, obviously, of solving simultaneous equations. I'll leave it up to you which way you do it. But what I'm going to do for this is to substitute equation 2 into equation 1. So if we do that, then I'm going to have alpha equals 5 plus 3 beta. So if I times beta by 3, you're going to get 7 3 is 21, and 3 times minus 4 alpha is going to give me minus 12 alpha. So if I continue just down here now, now if we add 12 alpha to both sides, we're therefore going to get 13 alpha equals 5 plus 21, which is 26. Dividing both sides by 13 gives us alpha equals 2. Now that I've got alpha equals 2, I could substitute this back uh, into, say, equation 2. And if I substitute that back into 2, I therefore have beta equals 7 minus 4 lots of alpha. 4 times 2 is 8. So therefore, beta equals 7 minus 8, which is minus 1. And now, all I need to do to get p is to look at comparing the j components. And if I compare the j components, I've got p equals minus 3. And then I've got alpha times 1 which is just alpha, and alpha is 2, so that's going to be plus 2. And then I've got plus 7 beta. Well, beta is minus 1, so that's going to be 7 times minus 1, which is minus 7. And so work that out, and you therefore end up with P equaling minus 8. OK. Now, it's worth noting, by the way, that this diagram clearly isn't accurate. It doesn't have to be accurate to really appreciate the problem. But you can see now that the position of P couldn't have been here for my drawing because what we've got then is for R, the position vector of this point, apparently we go up to the plane and now we do alpha lots of this vector. Now alpha was 2, so that would be 1, 2 of these would take me to about here. But then we do beta lots of this vector, and beta was minus 1, which would mean we'd go in this direction. So according to this diagram, the point, this point here, would be about over here if I extended the plane. OK? but it doesn't detract from getting this answer. Well, I hope that's been of some use to you and that you'll now be able to solve similar problems like this.